So how do you make it? How do you overcome the odds? I don't know what to say, really. Three minutes to the biggest battle of our professional lives all comes down to today. We're in hell right now, gentlemen. Believe me. And we can stay here, get the shit kicked out of us, or we can fight our way back into the light. We can climb out of hell. Or you could be like me. Dream of pro football, get hurt, dream over. Find yourself with just seven bucks in your pocket. So how did I get here? By being the hardest worker in the room. Now it's time to see who has a heart. Now is the time to prove to yourselves and prove to everyone out there you are somebody. You are worthy of something. And you're able to do something special that no one else in the world can do. Are you ready to go out there and take what's yours? Yeah! What you worked hard for? Yeah! All of us in life have things we want. We don't get what we want. We get what we have to have. We all get what we tolerate in ourselves and other people. But when you're no longer willing to tolerate something, that's when your life changes. Everyone in the world has a list of things they think they should do. I should lose weight. I should work out. I should spend more time with my kids. I should work harder. I should make more calls. I should, I should, I should, I should. And then you know what? People don't do their shoulds and they get mad at themselves. They beat themselves up about it. What changes people is when your should becomes a must. When suddenly the thing you said should happen has to happen. That's when human beings change. It's like if you want to take the island and you're the head of the army and you want to take the island, the most powerful way to take the island is burn the boats. Because if there's no way to go back, it's amazing what happens when it's a must to do something versus a should. That's what makes human beings succeed. Ego is the success inhibitor. You have to do your best not to make decisions based off of ego for sure. Success and failure are generally slow processes. Either slowly building things up or gradually tearing them down. And that's why I say you've got to pay attention. You have to watch. You have to watch every single second. Because those seconds, they turn into minutes. And minutes turn into hours, and hours turn into days, and days turn into years. And so, that second, that second that just went by, that counted. And so did that second, and so did that one, and in those precious seconds, you are either building or you are decaying. You are either gaining ground or you are losing ground in that second and in every second. Every second. Dreams shattered, 
sent home with seven bucks in my pocket. I was like, wait, no, I got to play in the NFL eventually. Those are my big goals. That's my dream. You realize that, that playing in the NFL was the best thing that never happened because it got me here. So my point is, look, you're going to get your ass kicked. We're going to get the shit kicked out of us. You got to get up. You got to have faith that the one thing you wanted to happen oftentimes is the best thing that never happened. So have faith and just keep that in mind and keep plugging away. do this shit until they throw fucking dirt on top of my ass. Until they bury me. You wanted me. Here I am. Pain is temporary. It may last for a minute or an hour or a day or even a year. But eventually it will subside and something else will take its place. If I quit, however, it will last forever. There's two sides of pain that I don't think a lot of people really understand, right? There's, there's one side of pain that's the suffering and the discomfort side of pain. You remember what that felt like. But then there's another side of pain that's called effort. It's called glory. It's called, if you can find a way to push through pain, there's something greater on the other side of it. I'm going to prove to you that I can come back, that I will come back, because I got this motherfucker right here. I am determined. It's my motherfucking magnificent obsession. But let me tell you, when they split me open and I passed away three times from there, <laughs> you talk about broad damn. God damn. But this thing that we do was my motherfucking magnificent obsession. I was obsessed with this shit. I'm gonna do this shit until they throw fucking dirt on top of my ass, until they bury me. The greatest pain of my life is the reason I'm standing here today. I'm not afraid to die on a treadmill, right? I will not yeah. be outworked, right. period. Let me tell you something you already know. The world ain't all sunshine and rainbows. It's a very mean and nasty place, and I don't care how tough you are, it will beat you to your knees and keep you there permanently if you let it. You, me, or nobody is going to hit as hard as life. But it ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward. That's how winning is done. Now, if you know what you're worth, now go out and get what you're worth. But you got to be willing to take the hits and not pointing fingers saying you ain't where you want to be because of him or her or anybody. Cowards do that and that ain't you. You're better than that. Anybody can dream it, but you'll never see it until you're willing to be committed to it. When I didn't have anything, church didn't have any members, I'd get off work, work in a car by, I'd drive up the roads and work on the church till I had to turn around and go back to work. We worked when we didn't have food. We worked when we didn't have lights. I was putting my whole check in the offering. All of it, trying to keep it going. When I finally got some staff, I went on the road preaching. And whatever I made on the road preaching, I brought it home to make the payroll of the staff. And sometimes I got them paid and couldn't pay me. Commitments look like a fool. Didn't have any clothes. Suits was falling off me. Lying in 
wore out my clothes, couldn't send them to the cleaners, had to wash my suit in the washing machine. They laughed at me, looked like an old raggedy country preacher. I had holes in my shoes. They laughed at me. They said that boy's lost his mind. He'll never be nothing. He stutters. He's got a list for these speech. He'll never be a preacher. I It's not going to be easy. It was hard laying on the floor of the Penobscot building, looking out of the window, daydreaming, saying, Les, can you do this? Can you make this happen? I used to listen to tapes day in and day out about see you at the top. Don't let nobody steal your dream. I used to ask myself, can I do this? And something said within me, you're the one. You're the one. And let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. While you're here, and before you go back home to your respective cities and communities, write down at least five reasons on why you deserve your dream, on why you won't give up, what's going to make you unstoppable, why you must be unreasonable, because logical, practical thinking says you can't do it today. But if you want to produce unreasonable results in your life like living your dream and taking charge of your destiny you've got to be an unreasonable person you've got to be an uncommon person